swimming, like, uh, fish. Good views. I don't know, choppy sometimes, I guess. Jellyfish, because they scare me. It's highly reflective, you know, so it reflects the sky, so that again makes it slightly mysterious, you know, because is it there or is it not? Waves. Rock pools. Sea life. Marine biologists. Dazzling blues and greens to dark, dark, fathomless sort of depths. You can have an angry sea, you can have a calm sea, a serene sea, a silver sea. The smell of the tang of the kind of seaweed and, and the shore, that's quite a pungent sort of wake-up kind of smell. Freedom, probably. Um, beauty. Splash and chilling and fun. Yeah, chilling is nice. All the wee creatures like underneath and a uh, like the waves like crashing in. Vast, wide, um, sometimes clean, but in other ways I think polluted. You get sort of foaming crests and you get sort of huge big rolling waves. Um, I, it sees ever changing. Yeah, it's, it's never the same. Cold. <laughs> yeah. Choppy. Shells, rocks, sea glass, seaweed. It can be dangerous. It can be um, very inviting. Um, so it's a bit of an enigma. We came up in '77, still on the boat. And what I like about the sea and living on the boat is that. I'm fairly in charge of my own life, and you can't be in charge of the sea or the wind and everything else. So I like the fact that I couldn't always do what I wanted to do. I couldn't always go ashore, and I unfortunately feel queasy a lot of the time on the boat, and I couldn't do anything about that. And I like that, not being in charge for once. I was really interested in solving engineering type problems. It was never a burden to me being at sea. Most well, most ships I enjoyed being on. But, well, there are some, obviously, which were very highly work-intensive, very uncomfortable to sail on, which weren't quite so good. But problem solving, I like solving problems and uh, figuring out how things operate. Um, my dad started sailing, um, and that kind of got me into it, but the rest of my family aren't big sailors. <laughs> but I'm sort of the one who sails the most from my family. I suppose I quite like the competitive side of things. Um, but it's it's quite a social sport as well. Um, that's why I quite like it. And I, I just something about being in the water I quite like. Because the tide comes in twice a day and goes out twice a day, and it can be quite violent in the winter, it means the beach is constantly in motion in a way, uh, cleaning the rocks, polishing them, taking the debris away, or piling up debris, piling up sand, so the beaches change all the time. So the joy for me is to walk along the shore to see how different it was the last time <laughs> I went along that particular beach and try to pick out the geology, uh, because it hasn't really been described, uh, certainly in the Anellan area, since about 1900, in any kind of depth, so that you've not much to go on. And because geology is a science, uh, it changes all the time. The new ideas come along, new exploration comes along. So that, uh, for me, it's quite a challenge in this area, especially where the mapping isn't terribly up to date, to explore the shore. It was a really windy day, and I was standing on a rock, and the waves, I was, I was just in my normal clothes, and the waves were just crashing against me. And but it was refreshing, though. <laughs> Yeah, once I was down at the sailing club and I was at the end of the pier and a huge wave came over and drenched me. This part of the world had a, it was a big tradition of this is where people um, people holidayed. And even when we, my parents, when we didn't holiday here, every single venue uh, for every single choice um, that my parents made was a location by the sea, Scarborough, or Lytham St Anne's or Morecambe. Well, I've been working for the last 12 years. Um, we started Campbelltown. And yeah, we have one in uh, Isles of Arran, uh, Oven, 
I love to live by the sea. As somebody who paints, um, I find that the sea is an inspiration because it's always changing. Um, and sometimes we get fantastic huge clouds which reflect into the sea and the light, you know, because obviously the sea draws the clouds and these mammoth clouds have often a very unusual light, you know, which um, for an artist or somebody who's interested in even creative writing, um, it's very inspirational. We always go skimming stones together. We try yeah, and learn, but that's never really happened for us. So oh. each summer we go down with our milkshakes from the Rock Cafe and yeah. try and skim stones, but it doesn't really work out. I've worked at sea in a professional capacity for just over 40 years. And I think I've seen the sea in most of her moods. I've seen the quiet, foaming seas, and I've seen the dark, menacing seas. Um, I've been chased across the oceans by big storms and I've raced across seas in tall ships races. I go to the sailing club every year and we have our own boat and we sail around the water <laughs> with all my friends and it's good fun and we get trophies at the end of it and books and stuff. On a nice calm day you see all the nice boats and things like that. On a windy day you see the waves, you just keep watching the waves. <laughs> but that's see nice liners going up and down. Within the last four or five years I've actually um, worked out that you can go a bit further into the sea and um, was recommended by a friend to try open water swimming and round about here is excellent for that because you can swim along the coast and you're not too far away and you feel safe. Um, but what that has led to is um, swimming across Clyde um, three times um, from Guruk to Dunoon. When I just started going in, um, I got um, prescription goggles and I realised there was a whole new world underneath the water as well. Um, so it's quite exciting. Quite often at like, my local cadet club, um, we are quite often end up in the water and swimming about and mucking about at the end and uh, swimming from boats to boats and uh, hijacking other boats. So we're always in the water there, and it's just so much fun. Well, I do swim in the sea. I swim out there. Um, I mean, I find the sea very enticing. And um, I also knew somebody along the road, who uh, Teresa, who came from Barra, and sometimes I'd walk with Teresa, and uh, we'd look at the sea, and she'd say, yep, it really looks clear you know, and she would really want to go in. And I never swam with, with Teresa, but it, it kind of reminded me of this thing that, that sometimes when we look at the water, you feel, really, I'd love to go in swimming, you know, even if it's totally illogical that like you might be on Western ferries and you look down and you think, gosh, it looks nice, you know, inviting. When my wife and I moved here, we had we made an agreement that I would learn to swim and my wife would learn to drive, and neither of those objects has been achieved. <laughs> So I bathe uh, on holiday where it's warm, but not in, not in the Clyde. <laughs> no, it's just too cold. When I was in Bournemouth, we went to the beach and me and my granddad were going and jumping at the waves and stuff and we were going in quite deep where I couldn't touch the ground and we were just like floating about and stuff. There's a little bit just across the road there where some steps go down and... Uh, it's got a little sort of concrete platform, so and it's completely hidden, and so because it's quite a big overhang from uh, the road, and so I can get changed, and then I can go into the water and swim, and I just swim, you know, quite near the rocks, but um, and occasionally somebody will pat you because obviously it's quite visible, just a little bit visible from the steps. <laughs> they'll see me, you know, and they'll shout, you know, good for you, or, or you know, and you know, of course, you're way back, and uh, but. For the most part, it's nice just to do it quietly, and um, it can be quite cold, you know. But um, once you're in, you can actually feel the um, secondary circulation, kind of, um, and it's a wonderful experience because it's almost as though the sea connects all the land and the sky, and you're swimming in it, and you're also swimming in amongst the birds because the birds are landing on the rocks and they're looking and thinking, "What's this here?" You know. <laughs> and, uh, so I can be in for about 20 minutes, it's quite, uh, you know, quite a long time and then I come back and it, it can be quite chilly. You'd usually jump in with people. Sometimes I uh, go by myself but 
I don't feel as safe, but when like my friends are there, you don't think about that because you're just like talking and jumping. The the time really passes by because you're having so much fun, mm -hmm. and then it's already been like three hours, and you have to go home. When we was in Stendrar, and yeah, there was a big sandy beach, and we, me and my family and all of us, we was enjoying swimming in the sea. Didn't so far, not yet, but hopefully next summer. I remember being quite young and my mum used to be a swimming instructor so we just went out and learned to swim there and so that's sort of always in my mind so every time I look upon it just think yeah especially this one beach in particular I went down and made it further out than I thought I would and looking back to shore and just thought well you know I can now swim. It's a kind of personal challenge because sometimes you know if you feel you, you'd like to do something but you know you've got to get ready and get changed. But the feeling of afterwards is so nice that it's it's worth worth it. You know? Never swimming in it. No, I wouldn't thank you for that. But certainly crossing. You know that's obviously when you live here it's something that most of us do. Um, I had a couple of scary times on it. One of the times when I was expecting and I was going for a scan and I had just after saying to my husband, I wonder if he can get seasick in 20 minutes and then it was just like a switch. I started being sick and it was a really, really bad storm. As a young lad, uh, we, we always, um, uh, I mean, boating uh, and rowing was, was very important in this part of, this part of uh, the west of Scotland. So there was always excitement at um, being out in a boat or fishing or, <coughs> or uh, you know, sort of spearing for flounders or, so all, always um, messing about in, in boats. Once on a uh, really windy day, my dad asked me if I wanted to go out onto the sea to see what all the waves were like and stuff, and I said yes, and. Uh, I had like waterproofs and everything on and I completely got drenched. At night time, if we put down an anchor and suddenly the wind blew up, we would have to go on deck and we never wore life jackets. None of this health and safety. Because when you live a boat on float, you can't. You know, it's too difficult in the dinghy and so forth. And then it was quite the adrenaline flowed, you know, as we put out more anchors. I never felt dangerous. I never felt... Um, it it felt exciting, you know, uh, to to be on the boat, to launch the boat, to help with the boats. You know, you you felt um, <clears throat> as if you were, you know, uh, when you helped the boat hire, or you were doing a grown-up job. The only time I felt scared in all those years was when we were going round the Mull of Kintyre and there was fog, and we were in a shipping lane and we could hear the sirens of the ships and that was horrid and it was getting rough and I was feeling sick but that, that's the only time in 15 years which isn't bad. We rely on the ferries quite a lot. Yeah going up to Glasgow and we've got quite a few friends over in Greenwich so we go and see them quite a lot as well so. It's not like the same as going out like on like my grandpa's boat it is literally to get from A to B. I sort of I've managed to time it so I know that I can uh, if you get in the ferry quite early in the morning or quite late at night, you can sleep and naturally my body's got used to the, the engines when they change, so that's my cue to wake up. For me, I suppose it's a bit of a means to an end. It's strange, I, d I do really like being in the water and on the water, but I also like actually driving round. I think that's my sort of mountain bit that I enjoy. It's always the western or the Argyle ferries. It's always so rocky in the Argyle ferries. Like I was in the, Argyle fer uh, the western ferries this morning and it was awful, like it was just so, so rocky. It's fun sometimes, but it's scary sometimes when the boat rocks and. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I go on the ferry on uh, really uh, stormy days just so I can stand at the edge and see how <laughs> rocky it gets. About the past seventeen years, I've worked on tall ships. So I've been a captain there for seventeen years. Well, she's sixty-five meters long. Uh, we have eight paid crew. We have five volunteer crew and we have up to 40 voyage crew who come for a trip from anything from like a week to a month and uh, up to 20 of those can have a physical disability and up to eight can be in wheelchairs and the idea is that everybody works together we don't have any winches all the sails are set by hand
This used to be full of paddlers, um, ferries, steam yachts, and I mean, I never saw it like that, but the motor cars finished it. And when you think that at Hunter's Key, it was the second biggest place for regattas after cows. We lived in Lancashire, I was brought up in Lancashire, about 40 miles from the sea. And my parents um, always wanted to take us to the seaside from being a baby, as I don't remember. And we always went to the Isle of Man, because my father fell in love with the Isle of Man. So and that's the ferry thing, because we always went on the ferry from Fleetwood to Liverpool. And it was a long sea voyage, and we always ended up twice a year in the Isle of Man at school holidays. And those holidays meant an awful lot to me. We were by the sea. We did all the things that children do by the sea. We boat and fished, all of that. So that was quite in my psyche from, uh, from before I remember. There's a definite smell of the sea and the sort of the clearness of the, and the clarity of the air and stuff like that. Because even if I go into the city for a day, I can't wait to get back. I can't get wait to get back because I just feel so claustrophobic and it's so open by the sea. I'd, I think I'd miss it a lot. Mm -hmm. I'd always come back and probably yeah. go to the beach, actually. <laughs> <laughs> go try and skim the stones again. I know. The view. It is, it's lovely to look at sometimes. Especially in the sea when it's stormy, it sounds funny, but um, that's like, it's really nice to look at the sea when it's choppy and really wavy. Like, especially in the past few weeks with the storms and stuff, that's been really cool to look at. Yeah, the view and seeing the boats go up. I love watching the boats <coughs> go up. The beach, like, because it's nice just to chill out and, like, throw rocks and stuff, and it's fun. But I wouldn't like to have, I, would, that, I wouldn't want to do that. The fact that you have a free swimming pool just across from you. The trouble is, I go into the bay here, and I'm usually wanting to read, and within two seconds I'm just watching the change of light, and the it changes every minute, literally every minute. And I used to get my husband to come and see when it changed. I mean, he'd seen many moons, and particularly moon. That is very poignant and stimulating, much more than the sun. Pretty much everything, but mostly probably jumping in the sea with my friends. And, yeah. Um, Probably just listen to the waves and the sailors and when I look at my window I can see the lighthouse flashing. I suppose my experience of the sea, I would like that the sea continued for generations and I feel that that, that Scotland has such a histor historical relationship with the sea that um, what I think is that I, I know, for instance, fishing. I mean, that uh, I would, would like to think that um, the... I know the EU quota for fish and everything like that, uh, that, that, that uh, in some way it was protected, you know, um, so that the sea, the fish could replenish themselves and uh, that uh, life could go on and, and it would remain clean. I know that it's been cleaning up, but, you know, the sense that um, it would be nice if it did uh, be a source of uh, richness, you know, um, just something that um, was very much part of the earth um, for future generations, you know, that because uh, I think our relationship with the land and the sea is very important and uh, that because um, I think it enriches our lives, you know, the earth. I mean, obviously it's very necessary because it's the planet we're living on, but, you know, that, that uh, we have to take care of it. So I, so I think that if people really thought about their relationship with the sea, you know, it might help to uh, give it more um, importance in the universal context of things. <laughs>